Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. This morning, I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk some more about Martin Luther. Uh, I kind of use Luther as the introduction to us looking at Jesus as the righteous king who is going to come and talked about Luther's despair over his sin and, and how he came to uncover and understand the gospel. Luther is a towering figure uh, not just even in the history of uh, the Protestant church, but the, the church as a whole, and in fact, in Western civilization uh, itself. He, PBS even had a special a number of years ago just about the influence of Luther on uh, the history of Western civilization, even far outside the ideas uh, that he had doctrinally and biblically and all of that. So it's a really important character, but his most important contribution was actually wrestling with the sin and helping the church to recover a proper understanding of the nature of God's righteousness, our sin, and how the gospel addresses those, particularly through the doctrine of justification by faith alone. So I'm going to do just a little bit of wetting the appetite by talking just briefly about Luther and then recommend uh, a few resources where you could learn a little bit more because studying church history can really help us to grasp the truth uh, and learn how to walk faithfully with God in our own day. Luther was born in Eisleben, Germany in 1483, so even prior to the 1500s. Uh, the church at the time was very powerful and very corrupt. Uh, the popes around the time of Luther's birth and moving forward, one of them actually had sired many, many children and uh, just all kinds of corruption within the church, and it adversely lost the gospel, and it was teaching a form of works righteousness that was basically going back to another uh, heresy. Even though they said they sided with Augustine, they were actually in their teaching and practice siding with Pelagius. Uh, the, the church was very Pelagian, teaching a way of salvation that was by works, by doing penance rather than repenting, by um, uh, buying indulgences and these kinds of things, none of which were in the scripture and had served to really shut people out from the gospel. Well, as a young man, Luther was training to become a lawyer, which is what his father had wanted him to do, but he was caught in a terrible storm on the way home one night and he blurted out a vow to Mary, the virgin mother, um, that he would become a monk if she rescued him from the storm. He was rescued from the storm and therefore he began training to actually become uh, a monk. And during this time, Luther went through and was studying. And as I mentioned on Sunday morning, even went all the way up to getting a doctorate in theology. He was teaching uh, others. He, he had been assigned to teach uh, the book of Psalms, Galatians, Romans, all of these books. But Luther himself had such a strict conscience and an understanding of both the righteousness of God and also of human sin that he was plagued, he struggled. Um, he was very strict following all the rules that he was supposed to, would actually uh, spend hours in confession. And at one point, his confessor father told him, you know, Martin, can you at least bring me some real sins instead of all these little peccadilloes that you keep bringing up to me? But Luther was plagued by this because he realized the depth of his own sin, and in fact, that of all of his compatriots, and the righteousness of God. How could a man be made right before God? So during this time, Luther was sent on a pilgrimage down to Rome. This was in 1511. And he thought that this was going to make things better. He was going to go to the holy city. But when he got there, it only made things worse because the corruption, the loose morals, the luxurious lifestyles, not just the Roman citizens, many of them were poor and trying to follow the, the weights that were laid upon them. But the church leaders themselves were extremely corrupt, loose living, not following uh, the scripture, uh, living in luxury at the expense of all the people. This shattered Luther. He, he was horribly broken by this. Even the Holy See down in Rome did not measure up. So as this continued, eventually his spiritual father, a man named Johann von Staupitz, he assigned Luther to teach the Bible because he was hoping that this was going to open Luther's eyes. And 
during this time, Luther began to uncover certain aspects of the gospel. On October 31st, 1517, on All Saints Day, he did what was typically done at that time. He wanted to have a public disputation. Let's discuss these things. And he nailed 95 theses written in Latin up to the door in Wittenberg. But some students took them down, translated them into German, and then used this new invention called the printing press and spread Luther's ideas all over Germany. Well, this erupted into what became known as the Protestant Reformation. And I'll go ahead and leave it at that point. Um, incredible things went on during the time of Luther. Luther had many faults. He, was, uh, he, he could be a very uh, angry man. He, he said some things that were horribly anti-Semitic. There were both good faults and bad faults, in uh, good points and bad points in Luther. But he was a man who was used by God to recover and restore great truths in the scripture, and he is well worth our study. So I wanna mention three separate resources that uh, you could take a look at to learn about Luther. Number one, I mentioned on Sunday, the Bayridge Christian Church history class. We went through church history for four years. We spent uh, an entire year on just the Reformation and two months of those uh, times, or about two and a half hours a piece, we went through specifically on Luther. So if you go to brcc.church slash series slash church dash history, if you did that, you can get, or you can go to just the church's main page and do teachings, go to other resources, and you can see church history. If you look at lessons 27 and 28, they cover Luther's life and his contributions. We'll try and put a note down in the in the comment section here uh, by it. But that is uh, the church history classes uh, that we did. There were two separate classes on Luther that I think would be really worth your while. Number two that I want to recommend is actually this movie that I'm holding up right now, this movie on Martin Luther. It was a major Hollywood production. It stars Joseph Fiennes, uh, Albert Molina, Peter Ustinov, among others. They're all major actors. This was a major production. It was done in 2003. Um, and it is a great way to see a cinematic portrayal that is fairly historically accurate, actually. You know, they're going to do a few things here and there, but it is a fairly historically accurate portrayal of Luther and his recovery of the gospel and how the Lord was at work there. It's a highly recommended. So again, it's the, the Luther movie starring Joseph Fiennes. You can find it and buy a copy of it, or if you look around, you can, you can rent and download. Unfortunately, they don't have it free right now, at least on the, the sources I had, but, but it, I'm sure we'll come back out in the future. And then third way, if you really wanna dig in, is there's a great biography of Luther called Here I Stand that was written by a scholar named Roland Bainton. Uh, it was written in the middle of the 20th century, actually, so it's a little bit old now. It's 60 or 70 years old, a little long in the tooth, as they say, but it is just a great biography. When we did it in church history class, some of the folks got to read it, and people just admitted it didn't read like a biography or a history book. It was just so interesting, so rapid pace, so much moving on, uh, and I think it's still the best introductory biography of Luther. I've read a few different uh, biographies of him and his work, but it's the one that I would turn to and think it's really good. It's an exciting, easy read. So again, it's Here I Stand by Roland Bainton. So all of these are there, and you know, as we're heading into winter and it's going to be a bit colder coming up here, and you'll probably be inside more, why not take some time to listen, to watch, or to read, to learn about Luther or some other great people in the history of the church? Uh, it's a great time to do that. He's a very important person who helps us understand the beauty and the glory of Christ and his gospel. And so... Luther, Calvin, Augustine, others you can read and learn about at our church history page. I encourage you, take the time this winter. Let's dig in, make it a time of learning together. I hope you have a great week rejoicing because our righteous King has come and I look forward to us gathering together this Sunday. We'll get to hear the Advent Choir, light the candle, have the special readings, and also Tony Marsh is going to be teaching us on Jesus as the saving King. I hope you have a great week. God bless. Thank you.